go to a party. Sorry, shameful, shameful stereotype to imply naive innocence. But that's where, that's where I'm going with the three cheerleaders. And say they go to this party, and somebody, the local stoner, comes up to them and says, hey, want to try some of this? And they, you know, have you ever done it before? I haven't. I'll do it if you do it. And so maybe they try smoking pot. Nothing, you know, big happens. They go to school. They talk about it a little bit on Monday. We smoked pot this weekend. It was sort of fun, sort of dangerous, um, felt sort of cool. And they go on with their lives. Nothing happens. Three months later, they're back at the party. Stoner comes up. Hey, want to try some of this? Yeah, well, we've done it before. We know how to do it. Okay, we'll do it. Go to school, talk about it a little bit, nothing happens. And maybe they go through their high school career smoking pot three or four times a year, and they never experience any harmful consequences as a result of it, and nothing changes in their life as a result of it. Maybe, and I say big maybe with a big, huge asterisk that we're going to come back to, maybe you could call that social use of pot. The point being, nothing altered in their life. Let's say one of the cheerleaders goes home. Old man smells it on her. He knows what that is. Grounds her for a month, takes the door off her bedroom. Mom locks herself in the bathroom crying. She can hear in there, oh, my daughter's a drug addict. Where did we go wrong? And she comes to school Monday, and she said, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe I got in so much trouble. That is not worth it. I'm grounded for a month, the door's off my bedroom, and the worst thing was listening to my mom, how much I hurt my mom, and that is so not worth it, I'm not gonna do that again. And the next time she goes to the party and the stoner comes by and offers the joint, she has no problem. She immediately recalls the trouble she got into, that's more important to her than changing how she feels. And she says, has no problem. Oh, that's stupid. I don't, I don't want to do that. When I get to that point, and, I, and when I'm working with kids individually, I say, there are some people, when I'm working with a kid who's probably got addiction, he's going in that route, I'll say, there are some people who actually think that way. People like you and me, we don't comprehend that. It's like, this is so cool. Who would have think about, you know, why not do it just because, I won't get in trouble next time. That's that brain thinking. And the third person goes to school Monday, and she says, by the way, who were those boys that brought the pot to the party this weekend? And where do they hang out? And next weekend, oh, just by coincidence, she ends up hanging out where they hang out. And she's there, and remember this for in a little bit here, saying she's socializing, but her focus is on, is one of these guys going to break out some pot? And then, oop, here it comes. And she's thinking about changing how she feels. And she smokes pot that time, and she goes to the next week, and she does it again. And the other cheerleaders are over here saying, Susie's starting to hang out with those stoners. I'm worried about her. And her life starts changing. She does it more frequently. That's the difference between social use and when we start changing we have symptomatic use. She's making decisions in her life based on that.